And then when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. Well, we're on the Cincinnati. It's my team. It's my quarterback. They are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Hello? You play to win the game. They want you to cook the dinner. At least they ought to let you shop for some of the groceries. And on the way up, we're going to buy the kneecap off. You kidding me? Playoffs? I'm just here so I won't get fined. How can you not be romantic about football? Woo! Welcome to the Benched with Bonetta podcast. Another week. We are back in studio, ladies and gents. This is so exciting. Uh, big guest today. I don't know how we landed him. Okay, so you know how on ATN you guys have... That Connie Fox music. Right, yes. What what should we have for Mark Sessler? I feel like maybe like a gasolina moment, like just something absolutely unhinged. Darud Sandstorm. Graver, do you think that we can afford <laughs> the rights to Sandstorm? I'll check with the music department. <laughs> I have a feeling I know what they're going to say. Uh, we've attempted things like that. <laughs> they're going to say no, but I'll check. Yeah. Welcome to the pod, Mark Sessler. Uh, also joining us is Mohan, my trusty sidekick, who had just about perhaps the most awkward <laughs> greeting I have ever witnessed in my life. And being friends with Mohan, you see a couple of those, people, let me tell you. You see a couple of those, but that one... That one rides to the top of the list. What happened? Can you break it down for us? I can't us? even say anything about There was it. a lovely new producer here. Her name is Madison. She's joining our show. She's joining Game Day View. Came over from ESPN. Shout out to Madison. I'm pretty sure that's what her name was. She was Madison, right? I think that checks out. Madison. So Madison was in here before we started recording, and Rachel was talking to Madison for a while. For like five minutes, yeah. I was just like s- sitting here looking at both of them. We had it, passed the point. I know, but I just hate, say I hate hello when, when you're with problem. someone and you know that person. Just introduce them immediately, so there's no awkward moment. Oh, so you're saying it's my fault? No, I'm not saying that. And then she was like leaving the room, and she was like saying goodbye, and I to me. Look- yeah, to everyone in here. <laughs> and I look up, and we make eye contact for a second, and then she <laughs> turns towards the door, and I was like. And then I was already halfway introducing myself. You were already myself. halfway through the high up. And then she stopped, um, and then she came over, and then now I'm getting roasted. But the thing but is, like, Mark, she, it wasn't she's... that bad. Well, no, but it was minutes after, you know, we met, uh, you and I, and I thought that I had, because I would seen you on social clips on Twitter, <laughs> and so I was like, I think I, I think I know Mohan. And I was like, I think, oh, we met online, which is an, e- I thought that like, my opener was equally creepy. Yeah. No, so I don't think that It's the first things I ever said I think that that's him, a normal so. thing for people who are online these days. But yeah. actually, this is interesting. Okay, so you had the awkward greeting with Madison. You had a, uh, you, you forgot there was something going on here with Mark. And then our lovely producer, Sean, came in and you were like, hi, I'm Mohan. Sean goes, I've met you several <laughs> times. <laughs> I'd rather What's reintroduce myself. On? Big time. <laughs> I'd rather reintroduce myself than not introduce myself. Okay, at all. Hollywood. I don't know. Well, Listen, I think you're, I you're navigating this the best you can. Yeah, I'm doing the as a good friend of yours, I am going to make sure that never happens again. I'm going to introduce you right off the bat. I'm going to l- not let you talk. The only thing that you have to say is, hi, how are you? Yeah, and shake some. that's fine. Head. But and you got to meet me halfway <laughs> and acknowledge that I'm here and I'm looking I'll at carry, something. Yeah. I'll carry you the rest of the way. Um, okay, not to like totally take a left turn, but like just life being an NFL football fan is just taking a lot of left turns these days. Um, so today, it is Thursday. It came out that Deshaun Watson is going to actually be suspended for 11 games, fined $5 million, and he is agreeing to undergo a professional evaluation after a settlement. I wanted to learn more about what that part means. Um, Schefter tweeted, Deshaun Watson has to comply with an evaluation and treatment recommendations of a third-party behavioral expert to be reinstated. Sounds like he's got to pass some kind of test to come back and play. Uh, Week 11 just so happens to be the Browns playing uh, the Texans, which is quite interesting. But Week 13, actually. Week 13, thank you very much. He's suspended for 11 weeks. That ends up being week 13. Somehow, 11 I games know how plus that, the bye. I didn't know how that math checks out. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but here we go. Oh, this is the trifecta sitting at this table. We are all former Browns fans. We didn't mean for this to happen. We just wanted you on the f- on the show because we're big fans of yours. Well, kismet. I mean, in a weird way, not a friendly or good way, but just it's happening. Um, but let's. I mean, let's just talk about this. I know we're all so tired of talking about this, and I don't want this to be the majority of the show because we have a lot of fun things planned. But like, what are your thoughts on eleven games? Him coming back and playing the Texans just give me like an overall. Well, it's too, it's not enough. I mean, just based on what we know and what the NFL wanted, it's just simply, I mean, I think indefinite, I would have, even indefinite, even if it was one season, why is one season enough based on, on just this whole experience? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a settlement, and so I wasn't surprised that it came somewhere. I thought it would be 12 because I didn't think they would want the optics of Deshaun Watson returning to play the Texans. 
I thought that they would try to like anything that they could to avoid something well, like I, that. There was reporting that that was something that the NFL did not want. So I mean, part of the settlement is like probably both sides are never that happy with with it. Um, I, the thing for me, because watching these press conferences today, and we were talking before, like the Browns over historically have had some pretty um, problematic press conferences. You were a Browns fan for how long? I mean, going back to like 1986. Okay, so, so you've seen plenty years. of press conferences. Yes, okay. and especially under this um, this ownership group, there have been some. The, the team has just been bad, so it's been a lot of negativity. This felt um, to me like they live in a different reality, mm-hmm. because first hearing Deshaun Watson, um, who really. I, I've never gotten a hint of um, what, some of his statements about accountability, about I want to you know apologize. I, I he used the word triggered over and over. I, I hate that I, he I, said I, that. I, I think that's just so, so off base. And like um, for me, I there there was a lot of talk from the Haslam's about a second chance. Second chances are important. We've all had second chances in life. I mean, I've messed things up and sometimes gotten like a third chance. But like part of it is you need to learn through that and show that you. There's something about you that should create a second chance. That whoever you offended, whatever it is you did, and I just don't see that from Deshaun Watson. And the Browns, I, I feel like, have completely, in a very cynical way, glossed over where Deshaun Watson is in this process um, and where the whole where the victims are, because it, because the PR battle, probably the way that things work, you get a year from now, mm-hmm. end of this season, even people don't want to talk about it anymore. They want to focus on the football, and suddenly you have a star quarterback. I just think that's all this was about, and I, I really don't buy any of the verbiage around it on any point. I will say a, a few things about that. Usually, people getting a second chance doesn't come along with two hundred sixty million dollars. Right. I mean, <laughs> you that's know what I mean. True. Like a second chance is like, oh, I told a little white lie, and maybe you don't trust me anymore. Like, let me earn your trust back. It doesn't add up to me. And I was just thinking, like. You know, when all of this stuff was still coming out, like early, early, and and I hadn't muted as many people on my Twitter as I have now, you know, a lot of people were being like, he's a top tier quarterback. He's a top five quarterback in the league. Da, 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 da. You have, by the time he plays, you will have not seen him play football for two years or whatever the, the yeah. time ends up being. Almost two years. Like, who knows what his body is going to be like who knows what what he is athletically going to look like or what he is going to look like with this team gelling with those guys also we saw the preseason game um of these jacksonville jags fans saying you sick you know bleep uh what is that he, he's gonna go into the most hostile environment in every single stadium that he goes in that's just the fans then what happens to the guys on the other side of the field they're looking for. They're always looking for a reason to get mad at somebody and like take have that extra like oomph to take that quarterback down or whatever. Yeah. Now Deshaun Watson's got the biggest target on his back imaginable. You don't know what he's going to look like athletically. You don't know what he's going to look like on this team. It just seems like the biggest gamble with so much money on the line, and 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 not even that like your reputation. Like, you've lost so much credibility and so much respect from so many fans. It's just, literally, I know it's been weeks. And, like, to be honest, you two were the first people I talked to. And my girlfriend, Reshna, who's also a huge fan, I remember texting you. And I think I I just said, like, I'm so sorry. Because you have so much more history. And I think I I called you and was, like, in tears, like, all day. It's just so, no matter how much time passes, I just still cannot believe that this has happened. I think about, like, what, why you became a Browns fan and why they were... There was a there was finally a turn. You've been a fan for a while, and yeah. like it's it's um, like Rachel, like it's like they all every bit of good energy that kind of called pulled you to, towards them, mm-hmm. is gone, and they're now the villains. And it's like it's just um, it's hard to root for. There's this one quote by Jimmy Haslam in the middle of this press conference because you know the you know these these guys these owners like uh they they don't see the world the way we do. And he stopped everyone down and said it's important to remember. Deshaun Watson is 26 years old, okay, and he's a hell of an NFL quarterback. That's that was the tone that was what does that even emitted. Mean? I Sorry, mean, it's just like mean? just to remind you guys all that like we got this great asset and it's going to be okay. It's like that's why I think like people, this the three of us are jumping ship because and, and not all Browns fans are. No, I know, I know. That we played this this like audio clip on our show a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure you saw it, like of Browns fans just like welcoming Deshaun with like open arms and and what was really sad and and actually like quite scary about it was there was a lot of young boys in the group like just chanting Deshaun's name and it's like is this who you want to be your hero 
Like, oh my God, if I had a son, well, you have kids. Yeah. How would you feel if one of your kids, I'm sure you raised them as like Browns fans or would want to. I, I actually didn't just because um, we live in LA and it's such a different experience. Mm-hmm. But I, but I, th- it's funny because they um, track the league just like through osmosis and they both knew kind of what he was in general and what he represented. And they were, they were not they were not into that on any level. And so they'll go in a different direction mm-hmm. for sure. Um, okay. Well, I don't want this whole show to be about this garbage. I want us all to just like somehow move forward. And I will say, are you going to watch week one? You have to. It was just confirmed that Baker Mayfield is <laughs> going to be starting. I mean, we got, we all got to watch this. I mean, that is, that is like a scheduling tick that turned into the most attractive concept yeah. around. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like I kind of want to go to the game. <laughs> I wish it was in Cleveland. I wish yeah. it was. That's the one thing that I wish was a little bit different. But I think that, you know what? I don't. The more that I think about it, I don't because it would be really frustrating as a fan because um, I think that there w- there is a lot of Browns fans that stuck around and that are going to, like, you know, support that team. I, I think it'd be a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, but to see Baker come into that stadium and do what he does. Yeah. If it went well for him, it would if be. If it went yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, you know, his whole history is like the underdog. I'm going to show everyone. Yeah. yeah. Are you, okay, so we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to kick off quite a few teams on the bench with, uh, Bachelorette, the benched with Bachelorette. I still can't <laughs> say that, that even after weeks. Uh, and we're kicking off more than a few teams. Um, I know that you've kind of been going through a similar process of trying to find your team. We were just talking about this before we got started what what is your you know are you are you going to make a decision before game one are you going to feel it out are you going to wait six months like what's the what's the vibe i kind of uh because the thing is like i fell in love with the browns uh, growing up in the east coast Mm -hmm. i couldn't control it it just took over me and that's like back when you don't what do you remember the first thing that made you love them i I do because so i had a friend i was in middle school um and a friend from cleveland who became like my best friend um moved into town and i was a cowboys fan for like three months I, I was in Jets Giants territory, and I just decided I was not into either of those teams. Even though one of them was like the Bill Parcells Giants about to win a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. but uh, he, my friend, was like, "Listen, these Browns are on Monday Night Football tonight against the Dan Marino Dolphins." And I was playing Pop Warner at the time, and I went back home with a bunch of guys, and we had like a Monday night sleepover because there was some sort of holiday. Mm-hmm. And um, I just watched Bernie Kosar and Kevin Mack and like Ernest Biner and Webster Slaughter destroy the Dolphins, and I was like. I, it was just like when you fall in love with anything or anyone, like it just hit me in the heart. And suddenly I was like, I knew the names of like every player's uh, wife and like what they're doing. <laughs> like I subscribed to this like Browns News Illustrated oh, article what? that would show like newsletter that would show up six days late in my house. <laughs> I mean, it was like I was all in. And so I do remember all that. And like, I, I kind of can't, uh, you can't manufacture that. No. It's never going to happen again. So I kind of want it to fit into my life. And so right now where I sit, the Chargers are very attractive. Mm-hmm. Um for a lot of reasons, because I don't have to wait for them to get a quarterback too. It's like, I'm not, I don't have a problem at this point. I don't need to jump onto a sinking ship with mm-hmm. a nice story. I've done that. Um, but I don't have anyone else. And I kind of, am just going to let it ride Yeah. and see what the, like, I, I don't have to have it by Broncos week one. country. Let's ride. Is that yes, a little I don't bit like, of a, I don't like that a little I, bit of a hint? I don't like that I said that. No, <laughs> the Broncos like were the Cleveland's like soul killers back in the day. So yeah. I'm just going to see. Do you, do you have a plan of, of, a team that you want to support? Well, part of me is if Watson got the year and the Browns got Jimmy G, kind of might would have like extended have one more year, for a maybe. Year. But now that's out the window. I think I'm just gonna go into the season and just be like an NFL fan and just watch. Oh, you're the games. Rob Lowe with the NFL, yeah, hat in the <laughs> See, uh, in the crowd. I, but I do like the Chargers are. You fun. are wishy washy like no, that. No, I'm not. No, you They're, can't even like introduce she's yourself such to somebody a bad like confidence. You know? <laughs> picture of me. <laughs> uh, the Chargers are like little brother in in L. A. Uh, that's the, why I really like the Chargers. It gives a little bit of an essence of what I loved about the Browns. Is like the little brother that gets picked on. I am I'm the youngest of four. I know that vibe. I love that little scrappy like mentality but then I went to Chargers camp and I asked all these players like what what how does it feel to be like the younger brother and all of them were like the Rams are really good and like really happy to share a city with them and I'm like that's disgusting have I, a little backbone yeah you need trash. to be you need to be a little angrier a yeah. little bit more motivated to overtake that Rams team mm-hmm. um okay so Mark before we go to break there is something that I want to do I think that you are so funny you make me laugh all the time and you are the most straight you're a absolute straight man like i don't think i've seen you giggle once okay. oh there, there it is it depends because like dan will make me laugh legitimately 
Um, you're not on our show. But anyways, I, I wanted to ask you your your quick opinions about a couple of things that don't really have anything to do with football, and okay. you can be as cynical about them as you want. You can get amped up about them, and I just like want to know your overall thoughts. Sure. We just want people on this podcast to get to know you a little bit better and see the mark that I'm sure it will go great. We see in love. Yeah. Um, okay. So just make a couple of comments on each of these things. We'll go through them quickly. Okay. What are your thoughts on ayahuasca? I mean, I would do it. <laughs> Would you actually? Is that a real statement? I would, but I would not do it. I wouldn't like do it. You know, what's the vibe? What's what's gotta happen? Like not at my house with like my kids like running around. Like I would, <laughs> I would have dark. to be kind of like in a in a in, in on a deep journey where you're surrounded by safety. I mean, yep. safe people because I think whenever you venture into those worlds, not that I would know, uh, like you, uh-huh. like they have a major impact on what's happening to you psychologically. I mean, Aaron Rodgers talked about you know the, the experience. I kind of like he he annoys me in many ways, uh-huh. um, but not in that way. Um, does it annoy you that he has a bust of Nick Cage in his locker? Did you see that? Like, like a like a statue? I did. I kind of like the thing that made me think because it was sent anonymously with yeah. no message. Yeah, like, he, I think he, he was put AJ it up there. Oh, so, was it? Oh, okay. Hawk, yeah. Well, initially right. it was if, anonymous. If anybody yeah. sent you a Nick Cage sculpture, would you keep it and put it on display? Well, I would like to have a locker first of all. <laughs> I, I, like, then I could put it somewhere. But I think that, like like all these private detectives that are. Um, tracking down really important things like Watergate 2.0. I'd be like, you need to have gumshoes that are searching for <laughs> these types of who. Where did where did that statuette come from? But I but now we know. So okay, so yeah. ayahuasca, you're in. Yes. Would you do it with Aaron Rodgers, or would you be too freaked no, out? No, I that totally happen? would because like, I, you, I you could spend the rest of your that. life saying that you could, that you. Did I did that. ayahuasca with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> no one would believe you. You'd be like, mm, okay. Um, thoughts on TikTok. Well, I watch it sometimes, but like I actually have a secret TikTok account. Hold on, hold on. This is breaking news. But I don't even remember what it, what the name of it is. Because I, <laughs> you I, don't I, even know how to well, log it's in. Just so like I have it on my phone, and so oh. I, you go in and um like just so I can observe other things. But I'm not doing my own. I feel like you would excel one. at it. I feel like you would excel at like the green screen and like you making opinions about things. I feel like I would watch those. I'm not against it. It's just like I almost um. You know, it's like I just haven't done it yet. Mm. But once I do, then the floodgates would open. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. I know this is a little bit of an old news uh, situation. We've definitely moved past this. I have not. I still think about it every single day. What do you think about Zach Wilson? Well, I mean, what the uh, his the, extracurriculars. The, I think I think that uh, we live in a very judgmental world. Love is love. Yeah, I think actually there are no boundaries, and like I kind of have no problem with what he did. Oh. Um, huh. It, Unless, unless, I mean, unless, like, unless, like, unless you're against it. Well, no, unless then... it like, hurt, like, hurt a bunch of other people or something. I'm not saying that, but if, but if it, all parties were like kind of cool with it, it's like, I don't know. It's like, I at this point, I think the me of five years ago would have been like, I don't know about that, but it's like, go no, for it. it. It's love is love is love. It is. What do you think about the locker room? Like, absolutely. Like, do you think that that is actually going to make them more tight knit? this season because they know that he's like okay this this guy's the alpha i think it makes him like hot, much more like he's makes so young looking and he looks like yeah. a little boy and like it's kind of creepy about it it is he he kind of strikes me as it's one of the first quarterbacks where i'm like whoa these guys are like way way young yeah and but but they don't look always young to me they look like just men and yes. like he to me looks like a boy i so i, I totally get it there's yeah. so many times where i'll look up a player and i'll be like he's 21 he right. looks like he could be 45 you know right. what i mean these are they're just like so bulked up um okay speaking of bulked up what do you think about the she hulk uh it's funny because i am up in hollywood for a little bit right now and right down the street okay. from Chic. where i am staying brag much well it's no it just it happens to be where is I there am a the car moment. on fire in front of your hotel <laughs> no there is not uh but the she hulk premiere uh was occurring just a couple days ago <gasps> and there's all these billboards you know with her like 1877 number it's a little jarring to me i think yeah it i didn't realize it was a movie silly, at first I, I thought it was just like someone in like someone actually offering a service <laughs> then i then i could plugged in and realized okay it was well like a, i don't know if that is a normal thing outside of los angeles los angeles you see so many like four your consideration you see so many movie billboards because it's a movie town so i don't know if you guys listening have these in your wherever you're living there are full like call now if you're in a car accident or whatever it says 1-800 she hulk and it's tatiana maslani who is an incredible actress but i was thinking about this earlier she's not super recognizable no. She's just like I don't know what she's been in. Exactly, she's kind of just like plain Jane and Canadian. And she's dressed up. I mean, she's she I can say that because I'm a plain Jane Canadian. Uh, and she looks 
It's just, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not a Marvel person. She just looks a bit too ridiculous for me to get into it. The CGI looks a little. It's yeah, and I I I'm with you. I mean, it threw me. I also had not. I now I now I know about it. When I first saw it, I was like, I would call that number. So maybe, if you had but... gotten into a Fender Bender at that point, and the billboard was there, would you have she dialed one eight hundred? She seems on it because like there's a lot of <laughs> there was suddenly a lot of signage, so it seemed like her industry was booming. Oh, she was really uh, picking up. What's the yeah. what what is the lawyer that is all over L. A. wearing like Lakers stuff? Call Jacob. Call Jacob. One eight hundred. Call Jacob. Yep. Okay, you heard it here for, first, guys. Maybe we can get a Call Jacob sponsorship on this on the show, or one eight hundred. She Hulk. Maybe they'll sponsor. At us. the very least, she can beat the person up. I think she could. Yeah. She could. Oh, she get could you totally, in the revenge yeah. category. Yeah, yeah. 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 she could yeah. throw maybe, a car. Yeah. 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 She but could, maybe you too, because it seems like part of it is you lose control of all sensibility. Yeah. yeah. Are know. you a She Hulk? Why me? Well, no, no. I mean, she might. If you <laughs> hired, <laughs> no, like, like you're talking no, about no, me. No, like if you hired her, she might. If she, if she's so income, have so much rage, she might just throw you as well. So. Oh, like she could control it. I also love that she's just wearing like a chic little business suit on top, and she's just green and jacked. There's a lot happening. I have problems with, with her, it, folks. Yeah. I have problems with it. All right, yeah. we're going to go to break, but after that, we're going to talk about the best and worst thing that we saw. And there's a lot. There's a lot of bad stuff. So don't go anywhere. He's the best. All right, it is time in the show to talk about the best and worst things that we saw on social media. Maybe you guys saw an early screening of She-Hulk, and that was the worst thing we saw. I don't mean to be... Oh, people You're are going to come for me. Yeah. People Behind the glass, gonna... they're already coming at you. I was on the break. There was some yelling. There was some yelling from Sean. Sean's had a rough day. Mon didn't even remember who he was. Oh, my. Had to be reintroduced. We love you, Sean. Sean, you're our favorite on this podcast. Mark, you gotta get my back. Uh, well, I, I'm new to this, but I understand I know, but that I you're battling like some PR she issues. She always says with her. I play the victim. <laughs> I play the victim. But we, clearly, Mohan needs I, his own PR representative yeah, because his image has just been totally. I, I, I'll start to do that. Yeah. Slandered yeah. today. Uh, okay, so here are some of the best things that I saw today. Actually, I think it was announced today that Baker is starting Week One against the Browns, which we have already talked about. I am so excited, and you know what? All. I loved this and was also a bit confused by this. Uh, I think it was NFL that posted like Baker in blue or some one Instagram posted like Baker looks good in blue. And then our guy OBJ commented under it and said, go shine. He said, go shine. With that, with the icon or the, like the avatar that like threw me a little bit. What was the, hold on. I didn't see the it's avatar. Like a, it wasn't like an icy face or something, but, um, oh. I because with with Odo, with Odo Beckham I never know what's happening like what he's attempt what he's actually saying especially when it comes to Baker so I was like is this like a is he anti Baker but then he's very clearly trying to show some support I, I believe. think it, yeah. I think it was yeah, a supportive yeah. thing support. but I, I, nice. I was a little bit shocked because I felt like I don't know it was a little bit weird between them when he was there yeah the last we heard is they were having beef and the, yeah. and the other Browns right. players were on Team Odell da- dad's and then, got involved yeah. there's terrible you energy never, so like suddenly there's a massive you know yeah. 180 here maybe so. OBJ had a kid won a Super Bowl and was like you know what. I'm gonna rise above it. I don't. Need, I don't need to be petty anymore. Like Evolve. Uh, so that's one of my favorite things. Is there anything good that you guys saw? Or you want to go straight to bad? There was a lot of bad things this week. Uh, you got. You well, go. I have bad. I mean, this. Yeah, the, I this is not. This is not. We've talked about some bad stuff. Um, I as I mentioned, I've been up on in Hollywood and like I was walking down the Walk of Fame thing mm-hmm. where all the people are dressed Spider-Man. up. Spider Man. Yeah, but but there was this like um you know like the stupid stormtroopers that are all black because they're trying to like sell more something or other. But like yeah. um. This stormtrooper guy was like seven foot five. And it's How like, dare he? You're all meant to be the same height. It's yeah. like you know, there's like a, probably 700 people that want to do this job, yeah. and they hired this guy to do this. And like meanwhile, oh. there's someone meant to be Michael Jordan, and he was like five nine. So it's like we flipped something. <laughs> some weird thing happened it's here. It's like Will Ferrell and Elf. Yeah. Like not a huge issue. None but... of them are uh, blending in. Okay, I like it. I like it. What do you got, Mo? Uh, I, I haven't been here for a couple like a couple of months. Yeah, must be nice. You know? And uh, I noticed the other week you posted on Twitter uh, you eating string cheese, but you didn't pull, like, you didn't okay. make the string out oh, of it. Oh, right, right. Which, for me, it's there's a few things that we can do as adults that preserve us as children. Don't bring, don't bring maturity into this. eating string cheese, just, like, biting it off, I think it doesn't do that. I'm strongly with you. And it's called string cheese because you... Cheese pulled, string. Well, it's whatever. actually called a cheese string. How did you, what were you, how did you eat it? Well, okay. She first first off, there was two, there was like two issues. Okay. There was two issues with this, okay? People took issue with the fact that I called it a cheese string. It's a cheese stick. Or, or uh, string cheese. You don't even yeah. know what it's, it's called anymore. Cheese. It's string cheese. No, well, it's you definitely flipped. string cheese. You Thank flipped you. it, yeah. Cheese, yeah. cheese string is what we call it in my country, okay? Oh, bring it um, And I just, I was in a, I, I was driving, first off. You were parked. I can't <laughs> <it was> parked. <laughs> I was behind the wheel. 
Okay, I didn't know who was watching. There could have been a cop beside me. So you, you eat it like normal, like you. Yeah, but do they the... when in your country? Um, <laughs> did they? Did you? Were you taught to eat it differently? I'm sorry, I don't eat food like a child anymore. Okay, I'm 30 <laughs> years old. So you're saying animal crackers? You don't bite off all the limbs and then. Moan, eat it? if you think I'm still eating animal cracker or crackers, Oreos, you don't break in half and like eat the. No. Like Lucky Charms, eat all the oats first, and then all the marshmallows you are there last. Up. You guys need to grow up and maybe. Well, our, the Stop children eating inside food us in will... the children's aisle. The children in us glow still. Yeah. Huh. She, I don't know what's happening so over there. So you're saying I need to find my inner child. I yeah. need to reconnect with that. You're Peter Pan. Um, guys, I'm not upset about this. I, I was in a rush and I, I was just eating a, a cheese string quickly. And then you try to lie and say you're driving. Or Are you the kind of person that makes a little hula skirt out of yours and is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's excessive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, something in your face tells me that. that I is also actually... haven't had a, a string cheese in a long time. So. Uh, guys, I I have another slanderous movie movie take. Nope. I saw Nope. Didn't like it. Graver, we talked about this before. It was shot so beautifully. It is. It was like gorgeous, and that was really cool. But watching it, I was just like, I don't know what's going on. Honestly, there was a part in the movie where, uh, so you guys know it's about aliens. Have you seen this movie? I have not, but I, I, it was like the next on my list, and I'm very intrigued by what you're saying. So people have been so divided on this movie. There's friends that I've talked to that loved it. You've not seen it yet either, right? It seems a little too scary on the scary spectrum. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's something that you need to know about not. Mohan is he gets skilled. Like, Get, get Out was perfectly skilled. fine. Yeah. Us, I didn't watch because it looked too scary. Get yeah. Out was yeah. awesome. Seems, Us was awesome. Like, that's a spectrum of... Rosemary's Baby, not one for you. Uh, that, no, it's What's terrible. the scariest movie you've ever seen? Uh, Paranormal Activity was really scary. Does it still mess you up? No, I just remember that feeling of being scared. I'm like, why would I ever want to do that again? Do you like scary movies? I do, but I will say that that... Paranormal Activity, because there's a second one too. Like it goes. They're freaky. Like they, yeah, like kind of like it wasn't like I'm sitting there, I can't handle it. But like I have um, already have terrible dreams all the time, and it was definitely like <laughs> feeding those. Like it, like suddenly elements of that were like bleeding into the dreams. So. Oh no! I had a dream this week. We are getting way off base, and we'll talk about football stuff. I had a dream that um, I went to an island with Woody Harrelson, and we were dating. I didn't like it. Not good. Not like a this like today's Woody Harrelson, not today's not Woody from Cheers. Today's like, Woody Harrelson took me to an island, and Owen Wilson was there, and we hung out with him. That was a, that was a benefit of dating Woody Harrelson. Gets better. Yeah. Um, okay, let's kick off some teams, shall we? Yes. Let's get to the benched bachelorette. We've got five teams to say adios to. Uh, here's who's on the list. Okay, I'll run you through them: Bills, Chargers, Colts, Dolphins, the Jets. The only reason the Jets are, are still here is because of Dan. Okay. And maybe we need to pay him a quick phone call. Um, Lions, Panthers, Raiders. Um, you're still looking for a team. You said Chargers are up there. Yes. Um, how do you feel about the Bills? I always um, enjoyed the Bills because, like, they, to me, felt a lot like the Browns way back when. And they went through their dark times. I, it, right now... It's a little too bandwagony for it me. It feels like you're coming in at the top, and yeah. that doesn't really feel like legit. It can only get worse. I mean, unless they, you know, it, assuming they're going to win a Super Bowl at some point, but it probably can only get worse. Um, I agree with you. Okay, let's kick off a team. First things first. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the Colts. Yeah. Matty Ice. Thank God. Right. I don't get I an I, Indianapolis really vibe about, from you. No, like I'm you'd not have an to go Indi- to Indianapolis. I'm an Indi girl. Like, yeah. I went during the combine. It was fun. Nice. Uh, they all have all those cool underground tunnels. Ate a lot of good food, um, but ugh, I'm sorry. Jonathan Taylor was the only reason why this team was still in it, because I like him. He's really exciting. Uh, but Matty Ice, I just I'm just not drawn to that team. Colts are nowhere near your your list as the face. That no, you're I just it's too um I I, it's no disrespect to their fans or them. It's just too boring for me. I, I it's just the vibe boring. I get. It's yeah. just a little jerseys dull. Are yeah, like white. It's just all boring. No. It's and Matty boring. Ice is only going to be there for a couple more years. Right. It's a patch. It's a stopgap. Exactly. Stop exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. We don't need that. Um. Next team to go, Miami. You gone. I thought you liked Tua. You done. I do like Tua. I really, really like him. I think he is so smart. I think he's talented. I think he's very, he's just, the, the way that he speaks, you can tell that he's a leader. I feel like everyone in the world is putting the most pressure on him to be like Patrick Mahomes this year. Like Tyreek Hill's not setting him up for success. No. And also, I, you have to think about, you know, this This is a relationship that you are getting into. Can you see yourself with this team in five years? Who knows who the quarterback will be exactly. five years from now? You well, may love Tua. Any quarterback's going to be. That's true. Years. But, like, there are some teams on your list. 
Doesn't it feel like Rachel could probably just do this exercise again, though, if she's displeased with the results, you know, a calendar, calendar year from now? That's true, but... Mm. I actually love that. You're looking for a long-term Bench happiness, part two. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, benched in paradise is what we'll do next year. <laughs> okay, so the Colts are gone. The Dolphins are gone. The next team to leave are the Raiders. I really like the Raiders. I hate Las Vegas. There's no way I am going to a stadium that has a club in it. I don't want to be affiliated with that. I know that you love Darude Sandstorm, and that's probably your vibe. I uh, know, but, but but no, Vegas is not. Um, I love them when they were in Oakland. Like I went up and did a story on their last home game, and like their tailgate would be a reason to be yeah. a Raiders fan to begin that with. That arena was brutal, though. It that was stadium. wild. But I am with you when you're picking a mate or something. Like if you don't like, like you don't, their stadium is their your home, and you don't like how it looks. The whole thing, the whole vibe, the whole situation, <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. where they live, the city they live in. Yeah. you know, it's not good. I went to an A's game once, and I was just like, Oof. you could feel that there was like a lot of history there, but I was just like, I don't feel safe being here. I feel like this is about to collapse. Uh, listen, the Raiders went through so much last year. I feel like this is a really tight-knit team. I really love the addition of Devontae Adams. I feel like this team could really go places this year without all the drama because they did that last year with the drama. So I'm really excited about them, but they're not for me, okay? <sighs> this one's tough to do because I feel like there's a lot of excitement surrounding this team right now because they're on hard knocks. But the Lions. Wow, I'm surprised. I know. I'm surprised. I know. Literally in the beginning of this, when we started this, the Lions were in the top three, for sure. We've talked about this like when we were recording. I just liked so much about them. Dan Campbell is so fun. He's my favorite coach in the NFL. Just like a child in a man's body. <laughs> but there's nothing tying me to that team. I don't have any kind of ties to Detroit. And to his point, three years from now, it might just be Detroit. Not any, not what you like about it right now. Dan Campbell could be... Dan Campbell you know. could be could be gone if they have another rough season. Like How, how long are they going to keep him on for Jared Goff you can't pick every another... time I see Goff on hard knocks I'm like Ugh. which is like every other year <laughs> uh you can't pick another hard knocks team too so you're right I feel like this is That's too close to home it's yeah. too close to home then for this next one I want to try and make a phone call is that is that possible Graver do you think if I put it on um speaker you'll be able to hear it we can try <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to be able to hear that sounds okay yeah if he doesn't pick up I'm gonna leave him a voicemail What, what is he possibly doing at 2.45 on a Thursday? Ignoring your call. What if he also doesn't have your number? Yeah, he's is he, no, like, no, 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 we've texted before. I just... Oh. Yo. Daniel, it's Benetta. Yo. You, are, you are currently on the bench with Benetta Podcast with Mark Sessler. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have some... Why? I have some news for you. You know the bench with Benetta Bachelorette that I'm doing? Yes, I am aware of it. Yes, I'm a, a, a former guest of the program, I do recall. So you remember in Vegas when you told me to, to keep the Jets around? Yes. I felt good about it. I felt, I felt great about the pitch then. Mm, wavering a little bit now, but yes, I do remember that. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry, my friend. Your time has come. The Jets are <sighs> gone. <laughs> They're done. You felt that this necessitated a call to me? <laughs> I wanted to hear the pain in your voice when I said you thought, it. You thought it was a good idea to inflict more pain on a Jets fan? <laughs> like, are you a sociopath? Well, I actually really just wanted to see... I wanted you to hear that I kept them this long. Which was... Oh. Like, this was weeks. Weeks and weeks ago. Months that you pitched them. And they made it I this far. Wanna, well, let me say this. Let me say this. Just so you know, there's very dramatic music playing right now. <laughs> Let me say this. You will regret this decision. In <laughs> fact, come December, you're going to have me on the show, uh, and there will be an apology. Uh, you're going to ask to come back to the Jets. Okay, I will, I'll say? I will do that. I will agree to that. If you agree to still come on, on the show and listen to us play this back if things aren't going so hot in December. Oh, you're looking for a double gotcha on me now. <laughs> <laughs> what is this show? <laughs> uh, sorry, buddy, but I just wanted to let you know. All right. I appreciate you letting me know and say hi to Mark for me. I will. Toodles. All right. Oof. I don't he took that pretty well. What is he coming on to celebrate in December? <laughs> 
I think he was saying if the Jets are doing well, she's got a universe. Which is, I mean, so what is he like? That's exactly. Like Joe Flacco goes, you know, what are we talking three about games here? with him? Yeah. What are we talking about here? So that means, ladies and gentlemen, that the last three teams left still standing are the Buffalo Bills. The Los Angeles Chargers and the Panthers. The Panthers. <laughs> Guys, I love Baker. He was a big part of the reason why I was a fan of the Browns. So who, you'd have an who out. Who knows though. if he balls out? You'd have an out if he left the team or were dispatched or benched. I mid-season. mean, what are we what yeah. are we talking about here? I could fall in love with the rest of the team this year. I could get yeah. to know everybody and then I'm in it, you know, if Baker leaves. I guess if he gets benched, that's pretty appropriate because that's the name of our podcast. <sighs> Why did you have to do that? <laughs> Listen, if uh, things go south, there's always the bench uh, in paradise next year, okay? Um, Mark Sessler, thank you so much for joining the show today. This has been so fun. Thank you to all of you. I had fun. I had a great time. Will you come back in December if the Jets are bad so that we can just sit here and make fun of Dan? Yes, that is a um, an old trope with Dan and I. Like I think he's worn out of um, things I've had to say about them, but I would because it'd be a fresh way to do it. Yeah, and maybe, I would, maybe you know. we can like pop some champagne and he doesn't get any, and we just sit here oh, and, well, and we, would... it's just a full 30 minutes of us laughing. Now I'm sold. Okay, cool. Uh, guys, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the show. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Benched underscore pod to see the videos, clips we talk about each week with your own eyes. If you see a Mohan in public, do not go up and say hi. It's going to be the most embarrassing and awkward moment that you've experienced that day, if not your entire life. <laughs> I love you. It's tough. I, I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Oh.